The Book of Numbers, my friends, a tale of the Israelites' journey to the Promised Land. Led by Moses, they escaped slavery in Egypt, witnessing the parting of the Red Sea, sustained by manna from heaven. Their clothes and sandals did not wear out, yet their journey was not without trials. They often faltered in their faith. Now the Moabites were a pastoral people who occupied the land east of the Dead Sea. They were known for their worship of gods like Chemosh and Baal, gods of fertility and prosperity, gods that demanded rituals that were often immoral. The Israelites, camped on the Moabite plains, found themselves drawn to the Moabite way of life. Their long and arduous journey had taken its toll. They yearned for a sense of normalcy, for comfort, for something familiar. They forgot the covenant they had with their God. They forgot the laws that had been etched in stone. The Moabites, cunning and observant, saw an opportunity. They saw the weariness in the Israelites' eyes, the longing for something more. And so they invited them, beckoned them to their festivals. Festivals in honour of their gods. Festivals filled with music and dancing, with feasting and revelry. To the Israelites, weary from their travels, these festivities seemed harmless enough, a welcome distraction from their harsh desert existence. They let their guard down, their faith wavering under the allure of acceptance and earthly pleasures. They ate the food offered to idols. They drank the wine poured out in pagan rituals they began to forget the God who had brought them out of Egypt. And then the unthinkable happened. The line between celebration and sin blurred. The Israelites, intoxicated by the atmosphere and their own desires, succumbed to the temptations around them. They engaged in sexual immorality with the Moabite women, women who worshipped foreign gods, women who served as priestesses in temples dedicated to false deities. This was no ordinary transgression. This was a betrayal of their covenant with God. They were commanded to be a holy people, set apart. Yet, there they were, in the shadow of Mount Peor, defiling themselves with the practices of a pagan culture. The news of this abomination reached Moses. His heart broke at the sight of his people turning away from God. A plague broke out in the camp, a visible manifestation of God's anger at their actions. People began to die, struck down by an unseen force. But amidst the chaos and despair, one man rose to action, Phinehas, the grandson of Aaron the priest. Filled with righteous anger and zeal for the Lord, Phinehas took a spear and struck down an Israelite man and a Midianite woman who were engaged in this act of idolatry. His swift and decisive action, a testament to his unwavering faith, served as a turning point in this dark chapter. The Lord, witnessing the blatant disregard for his commandments, unleashed his fury upon the Israelites. The plague, a swift and merciless judgment, swept through the camp like wildfire. Men, women, even children were not spared from its deadly grip. Each gasp for air, each agonizing moan served as a stark reminder of their trespass. The air, once filled with the joyous sounds of celebration, transformed into a chilling symphony of groans and lamentations. The stench of death permeated every corner of the camp, a constant reminder of the divine wrath that had befallen them. Fear, relentless and unforgiving, gripped the hearts of the Israelites. Moses, his heart heavy with grief and anger, stood before his people. His voice, usually a source of comfort and guidance, now boomed with the weight of God's judgment. He reminded them of their covenant, of the laws etched in stone, of the promises made and broken. He spoke of their ingratitude, their betrayal of the God who had delivered them from slavery, who had parted the sea for them, who had fed them manna from heaven. Their sin, he declared, was not just against him, but against the very hand that had sustained them. The Israelites, struck to their core by Moses' words and the devastating consequences of their actions, wept bitterly. The weight of their sin, the enormity of their transgression, pressed down upon them. 
They had traded their birthright, their unique relationship with God, for fleeting pleasures and empty rituals. The plague, in its devastating aftermath, claimed the lives of 24,000 Israelites. A generation marked by sin and rebellion was decimated. The plains of Moab, once a place of temptation and revelry, transformed into a somber graveyard, a stark reminder of the price of straying from the path of righteousness. Yet even in the midst of such devastation, even as the plague raged through the camp, a glimmer of hope emerged. Phinehas, the priest who had acted swiftly and decisively against the abomination, found favor in the eyes of the Lord. His zeal, his unwavering commitment to God's holiness served as a beacon of righteousness in a sea of sin. God saw Phineas' heart, a heart consumed by a burning passion for what was right and true. And in that moment, the Lord made a covenant with Phineas, a covenant of peace and of an everlasting priesthood for him and his descendants. This covenant bestowed upon Phinehas and his lineage stood in stark contrast to the fate that had befallen the rest of the Israelites. Thousands lay dead, their bodies ravaged by the plague, a solemn testament to the wages of sin. The camp, once a vibrant testament to God's faithfulness, was now shrouded in an eerie silence, punctuated only by the sobs of the bereaved. The memory of the plague of the countless lives lost served as a chilling reminder to the survivors. It etched itself onto their hearts, a permanent scar, a constant reminder of the consequences of straying from the path God had set before them. The story of Phinehas juxtaposed against the tragic fate of those who succumbed to temptation became a powerful lesson passed down through generations. It served as a beacon illuminating the path of righteousness, reminding the Israelites of the importance of unwavering obedience to God's laws. Phineas's name became synonymous with zeal, with a fiery passion for the Lord that refused to compromise, a passion that stood ready to defend God's honor even at great personal cost. His legacy served as a constant reminder that God rewards faithfulness even in the face of overwhelming adversity. The plague raged a visible manifestation of God's righteous anger. The air, thick with the stench of death, carried the cries of the afflicted. Moses, burdened by the weight of his people's sin and the Lord's displeasure, sought guidance. He prostrated himself before God, his heart heavy with sorrow. From the depths of his despair, Moses heard the divine voice, clear and unwavering, cutting through the cacophony of suffering. Take all the heads of the people, the Lord commanded, and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. The command was harsh, a chilling testament to the gravity of the Israelites' transgressions. To hang the leaders, the very individuals entrusted to guide and protect the people, was a public display of judgment a stark reminder that no one, regardless of their position, was above God's law. Moses, though his heart ached, knew he had to obey. He understood the weight of responsibility placed upon him, the delicate balance between seeking God's mercy and upholding his justice. He gathered the elders of Israel, their faces etched with a mixture of fear and shame, and relayed the divine decree. The order was carried out, a grim spectacle against the backdrop of the ravaged camp. The bodies of the leaders, hung as a gruesome offering, served as a stark warning, a visceral reminder of the consequences of straying from the path of righteousness. Yet intertwined with the act of punishment was an act of purification. The Lord, in his infinite wisdom, demanded atonement, a visible demonstration of repentance. The hanging of the leaders, though a brutal display, was a necessary sacrifice a purging of the sin that had infected the community. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the camp, a profound silence descended. The air, once thick with the moans of the dying, grew still. 
The plague, which had ravaged the Israelites with terrifying speed, abruptly halted its deadly course. The Lord, appeased by their repentance and the sacrifice of their leaders, withdrew his hand of judgment. A wave of relief, tinged with lingering sorrow, washed over the survivors. They emerged from their tents, their faces etched with a mixture of gratitude and grief. The silence, once a source of dread, now held a strange comfort, a testament to the storm they had weathered. Amidst the aftermath, Moses gathered the Israelites. His voice, hoarse from grief and pleading with God, resonated with newfound strength, a strength born from forgiveness and the promise of a fresh start. He reminded them of their covenant with God, a covenant not easily broken despite their transgressions. He spoke of God's unwavering love, a love that disciplined but did not abandon. He reiterated the importance of obedience, of remaining faithful to the laws given to them, not as a burden, but as a pathway to blessing and a life lived in harmony with the divine. The plague, though a horrific ordeal, served as a crucible, forging a deeper understanding of God's holiness and the consequences of straying from his path. The memory of their sin, of the lives lost, became a solemn reminder, a cautionary tale etched into the annals of their history. From that day forward, the Israelites carried with them the weight of their experience. They understood that their freedom, their very existence as a people chosen by God, hinged on their willingness to live in obedience to his decrees. They learned that true freedom was not the absence of restraint, but the embrace of a life lived in harmony with the divine will. And so, my friends, the tale of the Israelites of Peor serves as a stark reminder of the weight of our choices. We, like the Israelites, are offered a covenant with God, a path to life, to blessing, to abundance. But we are also granted free will, the ability to choose our own path. Even in their failings, in the shadow of judgment, we see God's unwavering faithfulness. He punished their sin, but also provided a path to forgiveness. He raised up Phinehas, a man of zeal, as a beacon of hope. The story of the Israelites at Peor is not just of sin and judgment, but of redemption and second chances. It reminds us that even when we stray, God's love remains steadfast, ready to welcome us back. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. It lets us know the kind of content you would like to continue to see. And if you haven't already, come on over and join our family to help us spread the word of our Saviour Jesus Christ by subscribing to our channel. May God bless you and guide you all through your endeavours. Thank you for watching.